right, welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Risen, and you're tuning into the greatest gaming podcast in the world, No Randos. Often imitated but never duplicated, please show your support by subscribing to the channel as we pursue truth, facts, and gaming experiences that gamers might encounter. Today, in particular, we're going to be doing a DAF investigation, one of the um, most notorious cheating crews in the game, and uh, we're going to be dissecting what exactly went wrong how it used to be and uh any potential solutions to um to their future so um we had some complications of actually bringing daf members on they don't have very good intentions to uh helping the platform or, or being honest so we were able to uh reach out to ex daf members to give us the lowdown of what's really going on so i'd like to welcome um lily uh nixie maddie and Graham, and we're here to see, uh, you know, what their perspective is uh, on what it was like being in the crew. So what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. How about you? Very good. I just sit down, sat down. Uh, awesome. Um, so, uh, Lily, uh, we're going to start uh, with you as our first speaker. Um, just tell us your experience with DAF. Um, I know that you're an OG uh, DAF member uh, from back in the day during the good old days, um, before all the cheating. Uh, what, what was it like being in a clean DAF? Honestly, back then, you know, it was, they treated it like a family. Everybody looked out for one another, you know, and, and that included friends of DAF at that point as well. So the saying that we always used to go by was an attack on one was an attack on all. Meaning, if a crew member was attacked, or, you know, obviously a friend was attacked, we would all respond accordingly. We would be there to defend one another, and at that point, DAF was all about defending those who were helpless or couldn't defend themselves, you know, assisting new players as they could, and had an honorable reputation. They were generally good people to be around. And they were helping and contributing to the community is what I understand, right? Uh, people were much more positive back then? They, they really were. They were held in a much higher light and in, in a very, very, very different manner than the way they've turned. Okay, okay. And I know that you got pretty close to the leader of DAF, uh, Michelle. Can you tell me what he was like on a personal level? At that point, he was very outspoken, incredibly intelligent, very likable person, just in general. He was supportive of his peers. Um, he was one that treated everyone as an equal and was someone that you could honestly confide in, look up to, and was a good one to have in your corner. Mm hmm And, um... I mean, people have told me he was uh, outspoken, um honest um and fair he gave fair treatment would you say uh that sounds like the old uh the old shelf that would have been him to a t mm -hmm. he really was yeah uh smart guy uh, intelligent often talking about things that he knew and uh very convincing in his uh in his like discussions right of course Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that it's difficult to, you know, for everybody to kind of talk about this stuff. Um, these things are never easy. Uh, but uh, Lily in particular, um, how did you feel when uh, you were asked to come on the pod? Honestly, I was I was nervous, really, yeah. really nervous about it. Mm -hmm. What uh, what what made you nervous in particular? Honestly, just knowing how how shelf and how love Daph has turned out over time and the direction they've chosen to go and knowing that anyone who comes forward to talk to anybody about anything pertaining to them you know they've they've been reported and known to have been booted or doxxed or you know attacked in that manner and it was just a really a atmosphere of fear more than anything that kind of loomed overhead the whole time okay uh would you say that you're scared of Shelf? I would definitely say that uh, I definitely wouldn't want to be around him, especially at this point. Well, I'm particularly curious. What was Shelf like, like before the crew started cheating? Shelf was the kind of guy that people were not afraid to come to if there was a problem. You know, if if there were cheaters involved or if there was people that he cared about being picked on, 
that were, like I said, either DAF members or friends of DAF, he would be the first one that they would run to to ask for help, and he was always there. He, no, without a question, he would drop what he was doing, and there was a couple of occasions where he had done such, where he would be out and about doing whatever he was doing. He would drop what he was doing in real life to come and help. He would be right there on the spot. People knew he was trustworthy and reliable, and... um you know he a was good friend just, i guess you he can was say. a generally good person to have around yeah yeah i mean sometimes i feel like we could have been friends you know obviously that that's never gonna happen but um in some weird way um i am kind of curious to see what could have been if everybody just you know was honest with each other and uh i guess the uh the cheating thing kind of divided us right so what are you gonna do it did. yeah but um Kind of like the uh, opposite question. What what was it like dealing with the cheating shelf? Because I was, I kind of understand that they're polar opposites, right? Dealing with shelf after he started cheating, you know, booting, doxing, lag switching, etc. He was a completely different person. It's like somebody flipped the light switch on his personality entirely. He went from being that person that people would like to come to for help or advice to he was the person that people feared and wanted to stay away from. Mm -hmm. He would, instead of coming into a fight and fighting clean, he would pull IPs in the lobby and then he would call out to his crew, you know, and asking who lived where, etc. Mm -hmm. Once they gave their answers, he would proceed to hit people and knock them out of the lobby until... He got who he was after, and eventually, that's just what he became known for, is cheating. I mean, he never used to be that way, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, obviously, this was, uh, you know, kind of like the, uh, a sign that it was the beginning of the end for, for Daff. I mean, it's always unfortunate to see a clean crew, um, being influenced by others and going the, you know, dirty way. Um, but regardless of what people think, I mean, once you go, once you start cheating, uh, people are going to change and, uh, you've seen it firsthand from every crew. It's literally like night and day, uh, with some of the behaviors of these people, but in particularly with, with, with DAF. Okay. Can we, let's talk about the, uh, the beginning of the downfall of, of, um, of the crew. Okay. So, um, some people, um, reference the, uh, alliance with sin and them being a negative influence, um, um, on the crew. Uh, do you think that that's accurate? Do you think that um, Sin negatively impact DAF um, in uh, going forward? When I was there, it was the first, to my knowledge, the, of an alliance with Sin that was made. And when it began, things seemed to be, you know, okay. It ran smooth for the most part at first. But from what I've gathered, there was offers put in place at one point or another for shelf to have access to buy booting panels and lag switches in, in bulk from certain send members mm -hmm. and at that point whether or not that business transpired beyond my knowledge that would have been upper leadership that would have known further on that but i will say i had definitely noticed a increase and the amount of cheating that had occurred from the crew and shelf after that alliance was made. And it seems like after that happened, it just started spiraling. Mm -hmm. um, it became more about cheating than clean fighting. And it was more about building a reputation for themselves of being the biggest and baddest out there instead of being people who were genuine who cared about the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there were, you know, there were a couple of other, um, events to kind of impact the fall of it. Um, can you talk to me about the, um, the quote unquote baby killer? Well, Sorry. there was one that when she had showed up, you know, it was, it may have been kept from everyone at first, but when I was informed of it, unfortunately at that time, um, you know, I was particularly close with this individual, mm -hmm. but after I'd found this out from another individual, I had 
stepped away from that whole situation and <clears throat> I had left the crew but I before I did I was made aware that she would not be removed even though Shelf had full knowledge of her actions. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh, she was kept there. Did he try to cover for her or did he say he would handle it and uh he had said that he would do what he had to do to protect her and all his members okay so why was he trying to okay why what about particularly her why was he trying to protect her i honestly couldn't tell you i just know that he had full knowledge of what she had done and he seemed to completely overlook that and was careless about it and the negative impact it would have on the image of the crew mm -hmm. and chose to keep her around anyway even with all the, uh, even with uh, law enforcement getting involved, he apparently it was of no concern to him. Okay. Okay, so, I mean, ethically, there there are things in question there. I guess you can say, um, but we can move on from that. Um, can you talk to me about um, of of the co leader um, Rose? What uh, what was your experience with her? When I had first met Rose, she was um, she was with the leader and founder of an allied crew to DAF at that point, uh, BBG. Mm -hmm. And after that, things transpired in leading up to her leaving B leaving BBG and joining DAF. Well, she was dating uh, someone from BBG, I think. She was dating the the founder of BBG. Okay. Um, now once they'd split, she came to DAF. She had gotten particularly close with everybody and kind of worked her way into her little niche. And long story short on that, she ended up getting close to and dating Shelf, to my knowledge. How, and how fast was, uh, how fast did she move up? Like, uh, she, she left BBG, came to the, uh, she left BBG, came to DAF. And uh, how fast did she rise in the ranks? Well, from outward appearance, at least from my personal opinion, what I had seen while I was there, it she didn't seem to move up in rank directly per se, as her word seemed to be a lot more favored than others who were in higher positions of trust and authority within the crew. Mm-hmm. And it seems that a lot of people that were being honest about a lot and were trying to look out for the best interest of everyone in the crew were overlooked in favor of listening to her. Okay. And lately, uh, have you dealt with her? Have you uh, heard anything about what's going on or anything like that? Um, what's going um, on in the present? As far as what I've heard of any kind of recent, she was... Well, the co-founder of DAF, you know, as you know, that's the number two position within the entire crew. Mm -hmm. um, he, that gentleman, was thrown from his position, and she was inserted in his spot, and she was given his full authority that he had had, control all of it. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen... It seems to have only worsened the wor worsened the shape of the crew in general. Okay, do you think that she's uh, qualified to be a co-leader, or do you think that she climbed the ranks because she was dating the leader? Honestly, I mean, the way it looks to me is it, it looks like she was chasing that position of power, and from what I've seen personally, I don't believe that she would be qualified in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to move on to the, the next part. Um, do you guys, uh, and, and everybody can kind of, um, chime in on this. Um, do you guys think that they're a normal crew or do they have, do, or do they come off as uh, a bit of a cult? Oh, it's turned into a cult. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, it definitely yeah. seems like it has that kind of vibe to it as you get more in-depth into the uh, the crew and you spend more time with them. Okay, how so, uh, Maddie? Uh, so, like, if you don't become part of the regular group of DAF members, um, 
that get involved in things and you're kind of off doing your own thing it, shelf and rose tend to get very upset about that and i know there was a problem at one point where he actually threatened to hack members accounts mm -hmm. um due to them not being around as much and not letting other members in their party uh because they have a rule daf only parties mm -hmm. uh, kind of deal so that's kind of cool so yeah and like you always it it, it just just the vibe as it, it turned like when i first started coming around i could still play with my other friends and do other things and then as like sos happened or or they're like inviting me to party and they're like hey we see you're online you got to get in the party and and be in our party you know what i'm saying they kind of started like pressuring members more to join daf parties than be with their friends or do other things mm -hmm. even if they were with uh their girlfriends or boyfriends right oh yeah okay um okay um so lily uh back to you uh what would you what, what would you say is the leadership like um and is there a lot of people coming and going uh what's the turnover rate like honestly while i was there it was a fairly consistent turnover rate it did get higher toward the end um but i would say that in in a certain instance where shelf had found himself taking a extended leave leaving the rest of leadership to kind of uh take the reins up and pick up the slack mm -hmm. it um <clears throat> It, it resulted in a lot of tension between further leadership, you know, as, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Excuse no me. No problem. I had to clear my throat. You here. could start up from the beginning if you like. Well, with shelf taking the extended leave that he had, it created further tension between the crew as far as leadership went because there was all of the weight from fights or events going on at the time or if incidences occurred within the crew that was left to fall on the shoulders of the rest of leadership and there would be occasions where certain leaders would not agree with others it would create a lot of discourse and tension mm -hmm. and it really it, it created a very stressful and very very unpleasant environment to be in all around in the long run Okay, do you regret climbing the ranks of DAF? Uh, do you regret climbing the ranks of DAF? Or would you rather have stayed at the uh, kind of like the uh, ground level of uh, the ranks? Honestly, either way it goes, looking at it from both sides of the, of the coin. Mm -hmm. If you're at the lower ranks of DAF, you're stuck kind of in that cultish mentality. And you're pretty much... You're, you're a foot soldier. You got to do what you're told, when you're told, how you're told to do it, or you're given the option to hit the door. And if you're in leadership and you aren't there, you know, constantly, as was previously mentioned, you're getting your head bitten off for that and you are harassed into joining the party, leaving other games, or just getting off the game altogether and facing the consequences for doing that later as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um e even being in daf the voting was um democratic right D weren't uh... honestly mm -hmm. the that the voting system there is nothing more than an illusion it's it's to make everyone outside of leadership feel equal because at the end of the day, and it had been made clear multiple times on that, while I was there, that it doesn't matter who says what, what vote says what, in the end, if uh, if it's something that Shelf does not agree with, it's not going to happen. He had final say on everything, so regardless. It was, so it was like um, a fake uh, participation uh, um, system, I guess you could say. Yeah, it was the voting system there was a charade it just mm -hmm. was there to make the the members lower ranking members who are not leadership feel comfortable mm -hmm. and and also um he 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 tried and and also he uh does different things to try to make you feel comfortable right i mean he uh some people have said that he's 
you know, intelligent or he's uh, very well spoken and, and even um, would compensate people financially, right? So he was paying um, tons of money to uh, different members for whatever reason. Can you talk about um, your experience with uh, him kind of throwing money around at you? Personally, I had only been paid on a couple of occasions. I know others who have been paid much more mm -hmm. at, a, at a much more frequent basis. But honestly, in my opinion, that, that whole pay system was kind of to keep you in line, keep you doing what he wanted, when he wanted, how he wanted it without questioning it. Because I think the way that it was looked at with that is, you know, everybody needs money to get by. And he's no stranger to that. So he holds, you know, a dollar or two over your head, says, hey, there you go. You, you do what you got to do. For him, mm -hmm. otherwise you face the repercussions, and it's either take what he gives you or face that. Okay, he he seems very possessive and uh, obsessed obsessed with control and things like that. Um, do you feel like you know if he was paying you or other people? Do you do you feel like that gave him the power to kind of own them? I feel like that gave him a sense of entitlement to the leadership mm -hmm. and it really ultimately seems to have given him a god complex and thinking that whenever he snaps his fingers his leaders will do what he wants when he wants because he's paying them mm -hmm. yeah um so when the uh cancer hits um how did you find out and um how did you feel about it? When I first heard word, I was very shocked. I was hurt and I was worried for him because at the time I had looked at him as a very near and dear friend. So naturally, you know, I was any support that I could be. I offered any support that I, you know, could. And really, I, I was at a loss. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't want to ever hear of anyone you care about having to be diagnosed with something like that. I've lost friends and family to cancer in the past, mm -hmm. so I was naturally scared for him. Yeah, a cancer has definitely t touched a lot of families and uh, devastated um, countless amount of people. Um, it's the second biggest killer in the world, I think, um, and uh, it's it's definitely a serious issue, um, never to be joked about, right? Um, so... But having said that, how was his behavior once you learned of the cancer? Um, you know, did it change? Uh, how did it affect him in the game? Well, after shortly after he had first mentioned it and told me that he had had cancer, he became more and more scarce. And it was, you know, very rare that we would find him for a while. He would disappear and be off game and you know we were told he was going to do treatments or whatnot and naturally we all understood mm -hmm. but after he was gone a while for treatments he came back and it seems like his entire demeanor and personality just changed um how so he was a lot more sh he had a lot shorter of a fuse to his temper he was a lot more willing to just go in half cocked with booting or you know using lag switches just whatever cheats so he would feel would be needed from case to case mm -hmm. he, he wasn't opposed to cheating as he was before he was just all about it at that point and it seemed like he really just kind of was a loose cannon he just lost all care he was just out to do what he'd wanted how he felt it needed to be done regardless of the cost because mm -hmm. like you know when you um when you think that you're dying you're obviously going to go through uh, an existential crisis it's normal to have a shorter fuse more of a temper and um and obviously it's going to affect you know your ability to be happy and to well, enjoy things in life right uh, of course of course and by all means i i was i, I understood that part i mean it was just a matter of 
how things played out after the fact, you know? Just watching him change right before my very eyes from what he said he, you know, set out to be originally to Mm -hmm. what he was becoming. It was very, very nerve-wracking, and it was a very, very, very hurtful thing to sit back and watch. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was also told that he wasn't around as much, you know, uh, dealing with um, the health issues. He wasn't fighting as much. Um, No. And and it created a lot of discourse uh, within management, I understand. It did. Um, In his absence during that time, there would be fights occur and arise. And as they would, you know, the leading was naturally left from him since he was not he wasn't present. To the lower mem- the lower leadership available, whether it be general, sergeants, captains, lieutenant, etc. Mm-hmm. And we were each left to make calls that we seen best fit for the crew and each occasion. Unless it came down to a situation where we felt that we needed to pull from the lobby. At that point, we were supposed to go to him to run it by him and see what his call would be. And nine times out of ten, it didn't matter if we were getting you know booted or lagged on or whatever it might be it was either we had to hold until they there was even if it was just one of us that stayed in the lobby we had to hold that lobby until all of the op were gone or we had to go to the moonshine shack where we all stayed until they left Mm -hmm. either way that's typically the way it tended to play out okay okay and in the end uh what happened when you quit when I quit and left, Daft seemed to have really, it was, <laughs> it, I, I'll put it the best metaphor I can think to put it to you here. It started out as a small grass fire, but by the time I had left Daft, Daft was was tail spinning and a complete burning heat, much like the Heisenberg, if you would think of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was a wreck. There was... You could tell there was really no saving it in the path that was on at that point. And it was really heartbreaking to see a group of people that I have once considered family going in that direction. But there was there was no saving it. And this was when exactly? Last year? I do believe it would have been in the last year. It was okay. six or seven months ago, roughly, I believe. Okay. Okay. So it was already... Um collapsing um six months ago it, it's been bad for a while mm-hmm. it really has and do you think daf members are trapped in the crew if they wanted to leave i believe that a lot of them want to leave secretly but they stay out of that fear of shelf and knowing his capabilities of booting and doxing mm-hmm. and it's no secret that he pulls everyone's ips and information and and he puts it into a a pdf file and and keeps it on hand so naturally i would assume that they fear for their safety and that's probably why a lot of them are still there even though they don't want to be okay that's crazy i guess this is um some pretty bad practices and even uh going back to the whole cult thing i mean um you, you know once you join you can't really get out i guess you could say it would be a fair comparison. It, it certainly would. Yeah. Because, well, what I mean is, like, you can't get out without um, any sort of turmoil or drama happening, right? You you can't get out without consequences or repercussions. Mm-hmm. And what do you think the solution is for Daft to thrive? Honestly speaking, as, as hurtful as it is to say, I don't think there's a hope for that at this point. I truly feel that... As a person, Shelf needs to retire Daff, leave it as the chapter of the Red Dead community that it has become and as it is. There mm-hmm. are some of us that will always in our in the back of our minds and in our hearts remember it for what it once was. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel that staying around it the way it's going is going to be beneficial to anyone. Yeah, it definitely had a good run. And he did want to uh, retire it at some point, like you said, right? And um, that was from the uh, the diagnosis coming in, I think. Is that accurate? 
from what I had understood at one point or another, he had mentioned handing the crew over to someone else and leaving it in someone else's hands. Mm -hmm. But I don't know entirely how accurate that was on his part. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he ever truly intended to or not. But naturally, you know, cancer treatments and so on would do a lot to a person's right train of mind. So it's really hard to say what yeah. his true intentions were one way or another. Mm -hmm. Well, Lily, I want to thank, uh, well, Lily, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, giving your, uh, input and, uh, you know, s stick around and, uh, we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll continue kind of deciphering this, uh, feel free to offer your, uh, your opinion, um, in the future. All right. So of course, cool. Thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to, um, the second speaker um we're gonna let nix uh have the uh, the mic here um so uh nix uh, from what i understand you were a sergeant at arms for daf and you would back up the general for fights and uh you were also a great listener um you would help people with their problems and offer um advice when people uh were going through personal issues is that uh correct that is all correct what state was daf in when you first arrived when I first joined, the only person that had any form of panels and lag was Shelf. Mm -hmm. And when I first joined, it wasn't used frequently because that was right at the start of his treatments. Okay. So most of our fights were all fair fights because he was never around for that because it was during the beginning of the treatments. Mm-hmm. So none of our members, none of the leaders had any form of cheats. And it was fair fights on our end. And even whenever others were cheating, you know, we were just like, we'll stick through it. Mm -hmm. The members are what make it feel like a home and they draw you in. And when they're, you see they're clean, you think it's going to be a clean crew. Mm -hmm. But then when Shelf came back and he was full force in the booting, that's when you realize it's, it's not clean. Because originally he was cheating to protect. He was an ethical cheater uh, to kind of counter, um, you know, other people um, booting and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and cheating, right? Yes. Originally, that's what it started as. Mm -hmm. And then it got worse and worse. Okay. And tell me, um, were people proud of being in DAF? In the beginning, yes. It, people were very proud to be there and call it their home. Okay. And what made them proud? And uh, is it just the, um, the friendships or was everybody getting cracked or you had high numbers? What, 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 what made people proud to be in DAF? The clusters that were active when I was there were all very close. We were all close friends, felt just like a family, and you were proud to be a part of something like that with people that, you know, you could consider that close to you. Mm -hmm. And you think that everything's okay because you have each other. And that's what your mentality is. You're proud because you have this group of people that are willing to do almost absolutely anything for you. Okay. And what was your perception of Shelf when you first started playing uh, for Def? When I first met him, I thought very, very highly of him. He showed his members that he cared about them and their well-beings at first. Mm -hmm. And he made it seem like, you know, he would always have your back no matter what. And that he would, he would do, he, he would pretty much do your dirty work for you. Okay. Well, uh, what exactly would that entail? If you were in trouble and he knew it, he would go and boot the people offline. He would be the one to go deal with that situation. And he always, he always says to use his name to scare people away. Okay, wow, interesting. So he, he was trying to establish his name as a, uh, a feared household uh brand almost right he wanted to be yeah. scared he wanted to scare people yeah. okay okay that's interesting um seems kind of 
like you said, a little bit of a God complex, right? Um, ambitious, but um, do, do, do people really need to use fear to get things done or to maneuver in this, uh, in this game? You know, maybe if you want to be the best, but is it really necessary? Is it really necessary to use fear um, to, to communicate with people, to, to, uh, to just coexist with other gamers? No, at the end of the day, this is a video game. No one should be scared to play a game. There I, should be absolutely no fear. Yeah, I get that. I mean, if you want to be scary, actually walk the walk. I mean, that's my best advice. If you're if you're an actual killer and you you've been through some stuff and you have uh, you know connections with uh, dangerous people and things like that, I would understand people using uh, that kind of fear as leverage to um, kind of um, you know, solve a couple of problems and stuff, but particularly in video games, um, people are generally not as dangerous, right? The, the, the real dangerous people are the ones that are, you know, uh, highly educated. Uh, they, they're, 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 they're mastering their craft when it comes to any sort of, um, you know, any sort of specialty they have and things like that, or they have, um, connections that can, uh, you know, move mountains, so to speak, but actually give people a reason to fear you instead of um, instead of being so preoccupied on your image, because looking from the outside in, um, I'm not really scared of him. If you want to be feared, and deep down you know that you're not scary, you're just a poser trying to fool people in the end, and it comes off as a huge waste of time, and uh, you you end up looking like a pretentious clown uh, if you get exposed. But uh, we're gonna move on from that. Um, uh, Nix, uh, I wanted to ask, what was the first sign of Daft's downfall to you? The first sign of it, I had recently become a leader. Mm -hmm. And we, the leaders at the time were all pulled into a party. And there were very few of us, including Shelf and Rose. There was only five of us. Mm -hmm. And Shelf asked us the big question. Are you all comfortable with me bringing back demon and llama which is the baby killer incident okay okay the only ones who said no were me and rose because we both knew that bringing them back would pull all of it back up to the surface and it would bring so much drama in and it would bring back all the feelings that everyone had felt when it first happened mm -hmm. uh like re reopening the wound i guess you could say yes and we, we both knew that it would cause disgust. And I was worried about the whole well-being of the crew. Because in Shelf's eyes, he thought that it would better the crew. Because we would have our head recruiter back. And we would have our wagon master back. Mm -hmm. And it, it was not a good decision. That is what started the downfall of everything, in my opinion. Okay. And even uh, the co-leader Rose uh, being opposed to it. I mean... Um, I got to give credit to her there. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like a, uh, a W decision. Um, it's too bad that you guys weren't able to kind of overthrow uh, what ended up happening, right? Yeah, no, we were outvoted um, three to two. Mm. And even though we were outvoted, Shelf had made it very clear that no matter what the vote was, if he felt that the de decision would better us, he would do it anyway. So voting is useless, like uh, Lily said, it was Pretty an illusion. Pretty much. Okay. Yes, it's an illusion. In his eyes, if he thinks it's better or he thinks that it won't benefit, his say goes. He will overthrow you in an instant if it's to his benefit. He Even if uh, Rose uh, says something, I mean, she's the co-leader and the, uh, you know, the girlfriend of his, right? I mean, um, he, 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 like went over her head too her opinion didn't matter uh, okay this is where it gets complicated in shelf's eyes the crew comes before friendship the crew comes before relationships mm -hmm. he made that very apparent in every situation if you're seeing someone that's another leader that is your co-peer that is not your partner in the crew instances mm -hmm. okay 
Um, well, uh, I know that you were close with uh, Rose. What, what's your opinion on her uh, with everything that transpired over uh, recent events? Um, when I first met her, I thought we were best friends. And Crazy. after Le when when I was out of DAF, it was like I was just dropped. Like there was nothing. We talked for maybe a week or two after but then it was like I was nothing to her after that. She found new favorites. Okay, so she... You're saying that she kind of bounces around uh, a bit. She's a friend hopper. Yes. If you benefit her in the moment and you show her the attention that she wants, she will make you feel like you're special. Mm -hmm. And then when you do something to benefit yourself, you're no longer special to her. So she seems to have, like, uh, loyalty issues, would you say? It seems that way, yeah. Okay. It's not a very uh, a good characteristic to have as a co-leader, um, logically speaking, right? No, and it, it was apparent in DAF that she had her favorites. And if you were not in that bracket, you, you felt that. You felt that you were not prioritized in any form or fashion. Mm-hmm, okay. And um, apparently dating was a mess, right? How was uh, the dating situation uh, while you were in there? Uh, dating is very difficult. Um, Shelf says it is not an e-dating platform, and I agree on that. But if you're a leader, you cannot date a member at all. Therefore, if you're a leader and your actual real-life partner wants to join, there are still repercussions in that. They cannot join. Mm-hmm. We actually had a potential leader at one point try to step up, and then he was made to step back in order to get into a relationship. Wow. But then a couple a couple months down the line, the shelf like threw it out the door for him and bumped him up to a leader. But okay. it was for him. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Um, and... Uh, what was the leadership like in your eyes? The leadership bracket was all sorts of messed up. Our the the ranking that it goes shelf is highest obviously. And then at the time right before Maddie joined, it was shelf, Rose and Wolf, try hard, me, and then Calypso was our wagon master at the time and then you know, our head recruiter had been bouncing around because we kept losing our recruiters. Okay. So recruitment is hard to find. It's hard to replace a good recruiter. Mm -hmm. And when we lost our good recruiter, mm -hmm. um, it took us a couple weeks to replace her. You're talking about Grim? Yes. Okay, okay. It took quite a while to replace her. Sh shout out to Grim. Even though and, she's right there. I know. <laughs> and the brackets were so messed up that... I was doing a lot more because our general was away at work. He would travel out of state. Mm -hmm. Our captain's girlfriend was outside of the crew, so therefore he had to spend his time with her away from the crew because she wasn't allowed to be in it. Why wasn't she allowed to be in it? Because they were dating? Yeah. Okay, is it just because of that? Um, From what I've heard, yes. That was the only reason she wasn't allowed in. So what what's the big deal about people dating? Um, why can't people date in DAF? They're afraid of prioritizing your partner's feelings over another member's. Mm -hmm. That's why they want your partner to be the same rank as you. That's why when me and Maddie started seeing each other, I told them I would step down, and they said no, he would automatically be moved into leadership. And he got moved straight up to lieutenant general at first. And then our actual general stepped back because of some personal issues. And then Maddie automatically got bumped up to general. And this is like um, an exception uh, from the usual rules that are in place, right? They, they didn't want to lose you, so they had to create a position for Maddie? Yes. Okay. If you're favorited, you, you get favors they mm -hmm. will do anything to keep you where they want you but it still demonstrate a certain amount of hypocrisy especially when they're telling you not to date and the leader and co-leaders are literally dating how did that uh uh make everyone feel 
Um, when they started dating, Rose had been... Technically, she wasn't even allowed to be a member after a certain period of time. He said that it was too much... Um, there was too much hypocrisy, so he had made her step back. But she was around us all the time anyway. She was still in our Discord and in our army chats. Mm -hmm. She was there. Eventually, when leadership started dwindling down, he felt that it was right to put her into leadership so that she could help him out. Okay. And after that, she just kept going up and up and up. And what she said kind of went as long as Shelf approved of it. Um, so, did anybody date in secret? Do you know of anything in the past that people would try to just um, bypass uh, Daft's rules? I know there were a couple of people that had talked in private, mm -hmm. but they never came forward with anything because they didn't know if they would be offered positions, which the ones that I knew about, they weren't offered the spots. Okay, so And a couple of them didn't want them. Okay, but in general, like the uh, the spots in uh, high ranks were more valuable than um, you know the the people that um, crew members were getting attached to. Apparently. Okay, that's intense. Um, we we did have a leader at one point who started seeing a member, mm. and when it was found out, he was demoted. Okay, and did they have to break up? Um, he, they didn't break up, but he got demoted uh, from his leadership position. And then a few weeks later, there were some issues arise and they both left. Mm. Now, I, I, they're not seeing each other anymore, but I'm assuming that part of it was because of what had happened. Yeah, I can only assume so. Um, did, okay, so, um, Shelf is known to throw money around uh, quite often. Did he ever offer you any money, um, uh, Nix? Yes. Um, I was paid a few different times. Mm -hmm. One time in particular had definitely stuck out. Mm -hmm. I had had a wired headset that was so janky that everyone complained that I needed to buy a new one. And I was like, I will get a new one when I can. Next thing you know, Shelf says in front of a party of like seven or eight different people, he's like, well, go find you a wireless one, send me a picture, and I'll send you the money. And he did. He sent me the money for it. And it was like after that, I kind of felt like I needed to do more in the crew because he had gave me this money for this headset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it's still, I mean, it's still a nice gesture, um... You know, as long as, you know, his expectations don't get a little, don't get too crazy over you. But you were obviously one of the favorites and you had a high ranking position. So um, it was a no brainer for him to uh, kind of throw money at you. Right. Yes. OK. Um, and how did you react when you found out he had cancer? How was he like? It hit very hard because mm -hmm. the time that we had found out. My little sister's dad was like really close to passing and he passed right after from cancer. So it was like a real hard hitter all at once. Damn. And I was I was afraid for him and for his family because you know, no one deserves that. It's a horrible thing to happen to you. Mhm. Mm and he did change. That was when he started when when he started getting more pushy on Daff is family, you help Daff out, you're always with them, and he would come in and he would boot people. It was like he didn't want to fight, he just wanted to win. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. Um, m maybe we could talk about um, your departure now. How did you quit and what ended up happening that led to that? Me and Maddie when we got into our relationship where he was thrown in such a high position, we never really got time alone. And that's very critical in a new relationship. Mm -hmm. So we talked about it for quite a while and we decided that it would be best if we stepped back from Daft for us. 
And when we did, we pulled Shelf and Rose into a party, and they were like, yeah, it's completely fine. We understand as long as it's for you all. But then it wasn't like that at all. They definitely held it against us mm -hmm. because I got dropped by Rose and Shelf started stonewalling Maddie and neither of us could get them to talk to us. It was like we had lost our two closest friends just because we didn't want to stay there because it was taking away from us. Did he try to intimidate you and um, or give you an ultimatum? And were you scared of him? Um, I am not scared of Shelf in the slightest. Mm -hmm. I I don't have any fear. Now, I was booted quite a few times. A couple parties were crashed. And I'm assuming that was probably his doing because I know he has all my stuff logged. Mm -hmm. He'd made that very clear when I was in there that he had it logged. But... It's a video game. It's an Xbox. I could really care less because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not It's not like he was doing anything wild and crazy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he talks a lot of crazy stuff, though, I've noticed. And um, definitely likes to paint a picture that he's uh, crazy. But um, if, if, if people start to stand up to him... You'll kind of see that um, that bark. That bark is one hell of a bark. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, but that's that, all it is. Yeah, that's that's usually where it ends. You know, um, I I really do question uh, a lot of the events that goes on um, around this crew and what people say, um, especially when he's uh, so obsessed at painting this uh, picture to everyone about um, you know ultimatums and uh, you know trying to control everyone and getting them to do uh, what he wants because he does come off as extremely manipulative. You know what I mean? St uh, strong or scary or not, um, he does know how to get what he wants. That's what I've noticed. It's a fear tactic. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that people are trapped in DAF like we talked about earlier? Are, are people like screwed there? I think they feel like they're trapped because they are afraid of what he will do to them. He throws around that he can hack into accounts and delete it and that he can get your bank information and social mm -hmm. security numbers. And people are scared to leave because they're afraid he'll do that to them. Yeah, especially with people with families and stuff like that. You don't want to be found out. You don't want your kids or uh, your parents or siblings to be uh, affiliated with the toxicity of RDR. And he kind of uses that uh, emotional side to um, kind of... Uh, hold you uh t hostage so to speak yep mm -hmm. but well so so what's the what's the solution then i mean we keep talking about this but what what do you think will save uh daf honestly there is nothing that will save it at this point mm -hmm. the reputation has been degraded so much they have such a horrible reputation mm -hmm. amongst all of the red dead players that nothing would change that. Taking Shelf out of the equation wouldn't change it. Taking Rose out, nothing will change the perception that everyone already has on DAF. The name, Death Angel Federation, mm -hmm. it's just, there's no saving it. Yeah. The best bet would be to retire it before it crumbles itself to the ground, like it's already doing right now. Mm -hmm. It should be like a uh, a dead Angel Federation, um, I yeah. guess. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, uh, Nixie, uh, thanks for, you know, giving your input. Um, I, uh, I agree with most of the things that you were saying and, um, and I, uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, what you're doing, uh, standing up to, uh, these people and, uh, kind of, uh, fighting back, you know? Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, we're going to move on to, uh, Maddie now. Maddie, how's it going? You hanging in there? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, you're uh, as our third speaker. Um, you're the ex general of DAF. Uh, you were in charge of uh, fights and calls before. Uh, you were you unfortunately had to leave. Um, can you talk to us about uh, that two seconds? Like, what ended up uh, making you leave? Uh, so there was a couple core reasons why I left. Um, so obviously the first one being me and 
Nixie started talking and dating and it was hard being that high up in leadership that it was pretty much mandatory for me to respond to any SOSs, any any little conflict, any problem a member had. They always came to me. A lot of members trusted me more than Shelf or Rose itself. Um, so they would come to me or they couldn't get a hold of Rose or Shelf. So they would instantly come to me. And it was hard that like we would try to hang out and I'd get bounced to another party or I would have to go fight somebody or I would have to deal with the situation. Uh, another core reason I left was the hypocrisy within the group itself. Um, mm -hmm. Just there was, there was a lot of times where we would be in a fight and it's like they want you to respond. They want you to be there. They want everyone to be in a party together. There's no friends allowed in the party. Um, even if it's like someone helping us in the fight, they didn't want them in the f a party still. Um, there was a couple times where I would be running a fight and I'd look on the whitelist and see that Shelf and Rose are on, but they're not here. Mm -hmm. So why is it that the founder and the founder assistant, which is more what her title is, um, okay. They were nowhere to be seen. Sometimes Rose would be there, but then there was times like they would leave the fight or like Shelf come in, he get the parlay because he's in defensive and he's lag switching. And then he's like, oh, they parlayed me. haha. And then he boasts about it and leave the session. Crazy. And that started getting on my nerves a little bit. Um, Cause even if he was taking L's by not participating in the fights, he would uh, twist the narrative to make it seem like he um, contributed to these fights and that he came out on top. That's what I understand. Yeah. He, uh, even in their discord, they have a certain section in that discord, a certain channel labeled parlays. And obviously he would post the most of them um, being as how, uh, from my understanding, a lot of these other crews uh, have certain rules that come to the defensive players itself mm -hmm. is to just parlay them, get them out of your hair, parlay them. My philosophy is to parlay them also with my crew. Um, you're in defensive. It's a game mechanic for people that don't want to fight. You don't want to fight, but you're out here shooting. You can go sit in timeout for 10 minutes. That's my philosophy behind it. Okay. And what would you say was the uh, leadership's biggest weakness um, while you were there? A uh, lack of it. Okay. There was no real guidance. Um, the leaders that were in place were very absent. They weren't there. Uh, you would have a lot of incidences where it'd be like, um, like our PVP captain would uh, wouldn't really step up. He wouldn't do anything, even when addressed by that situation by Rose and I. He was uh, kind of like, "All right, yeah, I'll step up," and like. He tried for a couple weeks. He would call me when there was an SOS. He'd be like, oh, is there anything I could do? I'm at work. I'd be like, no, dude, I got it handled. Don't worry. You know what I'm saying? But then even like when I was just lieutenant general, our general at the time was very, um, he tried, but there was no guidance from Shelf or Rose to try and get him to better himself as a leader and getting that situation settled. They just kept telling them or telling him, hey, you need to step up listen to Matt's, watch how Matt does it. Matt's great at it. I've been doing PVP for a long time, so it's natural for me. I was part of a crew before where I was in charge of PVP, so I had experience doing it. Um, and by these things, I mean call outs, uh, ways to like combat certain things, yeah, like yeah. tactical advantages, things like that. Strategies and um, things. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the... Uh, Obviously, the rank system was pretty bogus to you as well. Yeah, I think it was pretty pretty bogus for myself. Uh, just the the descriptions of the ranks themselves, where like Shelf being the founder, if he's on, he's in charge of the fights, he's in charge of the calls, he's in charge of everything. Um, technically, as general, uh, I outranked uh, Rose in fights, so my call outsuited her call in a fight. So if I was to say pull, Rose would have to listen to me and pull. Okay, okay. So I was more inclined to be in charge of that type of situation. But then there was times where I would get overruled by Shelf, who's not even in the fight. Mm -hmm. Where we would be fighting, like, say, like, AOC, and it'd be just a giant god mode defensive battle. 
where there's people in God mode defensive everywhere. We're just getting killed because you can't kill them. Mess. And it's like, we're getting booted. I'm like, shelf, dude, these, we're getting killed out here. Like, yeah. I'm going to pull. I'm going to tell these guys to pull. And he got so caught up in this power trip of beating, um, I would say specifically Red Scarlet is who he was beefing with. He was so caught up in winning against him that he would just let his members do the dirty work while he sat and just popped in sniff lobby with his panels uh the sniffer he would sniff the lobbies pull ips he'd go to a separate lobby a private lobby and he would start hitting the ips trying to boot people um it's not even uh a game any anymore you know if you're gonna be a like a like a full-time booter or whatever you know you're 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 ignoring uh the purpose of the game to you know to kick people out which is pretty crazy um and it kind of ruins the fundamentals of gaming itself i mean we we bought a game to play it and then you're too busy pulling ips and you know choosing who gets to go and who gets to stay because you can kind of play god with the the lobby uh, i find that, exactly yeah i i find that shows uh extreme weakness as a leader um and i know that people are um obsessed with god mode and it does suck but i mean if people are cheating you don't necessarily you're not necessarily obligated to fight them or or take the l because of these cheats right yeah no for me my my perspective is if they have to go god mode it's instant it, it's an instant win for for us in general in my perspective because if they can't fight you fair they can't accept the challenge they can't step up then that's what it is you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. most of the time the most cheating you'll run into for me personally is lag switching and uh kark spamming yeah a lot of people like the kark spam a lot of people like the lag switch and it's most of the time i realize it's it ruins the fun of the fight because it's like you can a lot of the times i'm getting kills after my death so mm -hmm. i'll respawn and my kills there you know what i'm saying even when um I recently fought Daff. It was like there was uh, a particular individual that I would get a red X on. He'd, he'd hit the floor, slide on the floor, and then I'd die, and then I would get a kill afterwards. Oh, yeah. Classic lag switch. A very familiar feeling, I bet. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, and <laughs> done it too many times. Yeah. And, um,. Where does Rose uh, fit into all these uh, fights and stuff like that? How how do they how does Shelf and Rose uh, work together behind the scenes? Uh, so a lot of the times I've realized in fights when I would be in party because if you respond to the SOS you need to be in the party that's the rule. Uh, it was mandatory if you weren't in the party then get the hell out of the fight. Or if you're not in the party and you're in the fight you're going to be punished kind of essentially. Uh, you would get talked to afterwards about it. Um, so basically, she would kind of go silent in a lot of fights. Okay. And she'd be on the phone with Shelf. And you notice she'd kind of be like AFK in the distance. Jeez. Like sometimes she would be in the fight for a little bit. And then she would disappear. And then she would be silent. So then it came to my acknowledgement that she was on the phone with Shelf, who's in another lobby... Or he's just sitting at home, not on the Xbox, on his computer with his booter panel up. Jesus. And she'd be pulling IPs for him in the lobby, hitting the lobby. She has a panel too, I believe, mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. So she and Shelf would work together on hitting different IPs. If they ran into a VPN, they would hit them together to stress the VPN. Uh, so they worked a lot organizing and booting and pulling IPs and... Doing those kind of things behind the scene uh, from what people and then it would be like they would do that type of thing. And then once the other team or other group, whatever you want to call it, the other posse would pull or they'd start dropping players because they're getting booted and then pull. It would be claimed as a victory. OK, yeah, because the booter victory. Yeah, yeah classic so i'm sure um all of this was very uh discouraging for you over time um and the the dating complications and amongst other things um what happened uh like after you quit um what did you end up doing uh so when me, me uh, nix and i we decided to leave daft she explained it we decided it would be better for us to do so 
Um, I started getting stonewalled by Shelf. Rose stayed in contact here and there um, throughout the the week Mm -hmm. or two afterwards, but then she kind of started getting real quiet towards us. Um, I realized my parties would crash a lot. Shelf has a party tool. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually had DAF members that still liked me, trusted me, respected me, um, come to me and personally tell me that they were in a party with Shelf and they were spying on my party and they saw who was in my party and they're like, oh, screw it, let's crash it, ha, 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 kind of deal. So they would crash my parties afterwards. And I'm assuming this is all retaliation for me leaving. Okay. Um, especially being as high ranked as I was, it's not easy to find uh, recruiters or generals that step up in a position like I did. Um, or in, in general, guide as well as a general should, as I did for DAF. Mm-hmm. Um And then even afterwards, I was told about, like, he's watching me, he's spying on me. Nix and I created a Discord for gaming in general, a gaming community. Um, Anyone's welcome to join that. Okay. Um, So if anyone feels like they need a space to to play or they want to get out of a toxic crew or environment, you're more than welcome to join our Discord. Um, What about X... It's a great uh, place. Sorry. What about uh, ex-DAF members? Uh, Would you welcome them into the Discord if they weren't uh, malicious? Yeah, 100%. Everyone, our philosophy with the Discord is any Red Dead drama is to stay on Red Dead. The Discord is separate. It's not Red Dead based. Mm -hmm. Um, So we we have members from all over the board, like different crews. We've had FFX members in there. We've had um, 300 members, chaotic members. Uh, buckos, all sorts of different members from different crews. We do different games. We play. We've gotten to different crews to play Among Us together, to play Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, etc. There's there's at least 20 different channels for different games on that Discord. And my advice to people that want to get out of those toxic environments, you can message me or Nix, and we'll we'll set you up in the Discord. Cool, cool. Be sure to get that word out. Um... Uh, do you also think that people are trapped in, in DAF, um, Matt? A hundred percent. I I believe they are. I don't think the newer members or like the members that aren't as involved in playing uh, are in jeopardy or in, or should be worried about leaving. Mm-hmm. But the members that are constantly around Shelf and Rose, I know for a fact Shelf logs every member's IP. He logs. He's told me this and parties um because there's when you're in that top three position you end up in a lot of private meetings as a top three uh that other members of leadership aren't involved in or don't know about um so i know i probably here out of the four of us um i probably climbed the highest on the ladder of leadership Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of secret parties where they'll kind of like conspire against members and they'll be like hey this person kind of seems sus or this or that um, so I know he does log your IPs, he logs your information, he tries to get you on his VPN uh, setup because he has a bunch of uh, like VPNs, like DAF VPNs that if you're a member and you want to get on a VPN, he'll set you up on it. But even then, that's giving your information. Yeah, it's, um, it's like a nice gesture disguised as a... Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I think there's more of a malicious intent behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do believe that some members feel trapped there. They feel like Shelf is going to come after them afterwards. I've had now ex DAF members that were part of DAF come to me while they were in DAF shortly after I left, asking for help, how to get out of there, uh, what should I do, what should I say, um, and I offered them protection. I can't do the same as as Shelf can. I can't boot people. I don't do that. There's nothing wrong with uh, that. You're not a less exactly, human. Exactly, but I'll I'll stand up for anybody. Yeah. Anybody that comes to me with a problem and they're my friend or even just a, a general person that wants to have a good gaming experience, I will stand up for because we're here to play a game. Mm-hmm. We're here to play, have fun, not not do what what's going on now in the Red Dead community where everyone's cheating Everyone's doing something, booting. You, you shouldn't have to join a fight to worry about getting booted or leaving a crew and getting harassed afterwards like I did. Exactly. And and no one is less of a human being or less of a gamer just because they choose not to cheat. I mean, that would be uh, fundamentally insane. And if anything, I think it's the 
I mean, I think a lot of people would agree it's uh, quite the opposite. If you have to resort to cheating, um, you're going to nerf your learning curve. Um, and you could see a lot of these people can't really fight. Um, I, I question if uh, if Shelf could even fight. I can, I can only speculate because we know that Rose can't, right? Otherwise she would. And... Um, and who knows uh, what other cheaters uh, actually uh, can bring the smoke uh, without their cheats, right? Yeah, yeah. No, actually, it's it's kind of funny you mentioned that because um, just recently, I, me and a buddy of mine got into... Um, I couldn't tell if it was more of a friendly PvP or not, uh, but Shelf ended up knocking himself out of defensive. And after he did that, because he does a lot of the defensive fighting... Mm -hmm. uh and Sad. he claims he wants to master defensive what a um joke. it doesn't make sense that doesn't make any sense to me at all what a cornball um, he claims he wants to master the defensive fighting uh a lot of players that fight defensive go oh i'm free aim i'm a free aim player there's no free aim for everyone to just play on a free aim server and it's mm -hmm. like my settings are set to free aim i am a free aim player i play free aim all the time I go against people with the lock-on system, and I do perfectly fine. I do perfectly fine. It, it presents more of a challenge for me in a fight, and it makes it more fun. Mm -hmm. But when you have Shelf doing that, it, it aggravates you. But when he knocked himself out of defensive, when me and my friend were fighting him and Rose, well, Rose kind of like sat out for a while and mm -hmm. then tried to jump in and help. Um, Shelf actually was getting killed quite frequently by my friend. My friend was killing him more times than Shelf was killing him. And that's going to create problems outside of the game, I'm assuming, right? Because he has uh, doxing uh, capabilities and things like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, he ended up actually lagging himself out of lobby that game okay. or that fight. Uh, I don't know if he left or he lagged himself out. It kind of seemed more like he lagged himself out. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, several of us ended up getting booted after he started losing he kind of got upset you could tell he's not like a like a, a he's a poor sport okay and does shelf uh scare you at all um he doesn't exactly scare me he worries me mm -hmm. a bit because okay. of the things he has said and i've been uh present to mm -hmm. uh like the doxing the uh the pulling ips things like that because uh there's a lot of people on this game that are older they they have families that are involved in their lives and to shelf that doesn't matter to him yeah he doesn't care he i i have i'm pretty sure i still have the screenshots of it where he threatened to call child protective services on another person he had a problem with doesn't he have children himself yes okay so they called child protective services and then he doxes them he, he, well, it was a situation where he doxed someone or he had someone dox the person. That person got upset about getting doxed because then his, his information was leaked out there. His wife's name was leaked out there. His kids, everything, you know what? His, like his whole social media, his Facebook, Ter everything. Terrible. They leaked it. Yeah. So he got upset and leaked something about Rose, which upset Shelf. And Shelf took it upon himself to message said individual and threaten to call child protective services and have his kids mm -hmm. taken away he didn't do it but he threatened and yeah, that's yeah. the whole him trying to put in a fear factor yeah. under the shelf name i'm shelf i'm you, you, i'm a I'm god do what i want to do i'm a god in this game you can't stop me i'm unstoppable right. yeah and uh, i i i've been witness to a lot of that stuff from him so he does worry me in a sense of that um, but overall, I'm not scared of him because if he did that to me, it's I'm a great father. I do what I do. I mm -hmm. play the game separately after after hours most of the time anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm not worried about getting booted. I've had my router fried seven times in the last like eight months. Terrible. So I'm not I'm not too concerned. I'm persistent. I'll come back every time. Okay. Okay. Respect respect and even that whole uh fight um back and forth with the other guy i mean he technically started that right he was the first person to dox and then the other guy kind of doxed um rose back is that what i understand yes okay so he's getting all butt hurt over uh fights that he literally um started yeah Okay, that That's seems right. seems a little immature to uh, take the doxing route in those scenarios. I mean, uh, definitely not necessary. And 
uh, he even got Rose, uh, and and he even threw Rose under the bus by, uh, you know, letting it happen. You know, so. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He's partially well, responsible. I don't know if it was specifically Shelf or Rose that doxed them, but I I guarantee they both were in work to the, together to get this information from whoever they did. Okay. Okay. And uh, how did you react when you found out he had cancer? Um, honestly, I kind of, when I was told about it, um, it was when I, I just became, I believe I just became general. Um, I was informed about it through, mm -hmm. uh, Rose and she, uh, she told me about it and kind of used it as like a guilt trip that I need to step up as a leader wow, and okay. do more. So I, uh, I felt bad cause in, in that moment in time, I viewed shelf as a very close friend of mine. When I was told that, I was upset. I was like, I have to help this. Like, I have to help my friend. Crazy, crazy. So I did what I had to do. I was stepping up. I would, you, you, out of out of gaming, you know what I'm saying? I would be at work and there'd be an SOS. And I was like, I have to help Shelf in my mindset because of the situation. And he needed help. He needed someone to step up and i was willing to do that for him because i was close to him yeah you too so i would literally step outside of work hit the xbox app and then jump in a party and, and guide the people that were in the fight because no one else was there for leadership because either a someone's sleeping or they're working or doing this and i would kind of sneak away uh at the time when i was working to call and jump in the party and try to guide people or whatnot so it was kind of like I feel like when it comes to the people that did know, it was kind of used as leverage to kind of make people feel bad, mm -hmm. in my opinion, which is kind of a, a cowardice move, even though it's a horrible event. No one should have to go through that type of situation, but to use it to your advantage and try to leverage it on people is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I agree completely. Um, well, if you could go back in time, what's one thing you change uh, that you could help the crew? Um, if there is one thing I could change is I would probably, in, in, in my, it's kind of like, I would probably try to get closer to more of the members. Mm -hmm. And then as I left, I would have tried to pull more people with me. Cause when I left, uh, at least close to a dozen players followed me and left with me. Wow. Um, I would have, I would have, would have tried to have gotten closer to more members and help out more people, uh, to get them out of that situation. Cause now if they do feel stuck, if they do feel trapped there, or they're kind of just in that cult mindset where they're like following shelf. Cause he's almighty shelf, hail the almighty shelf. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it, there, there's better crews. There's better positions you could be in. And honestly, you could even go to freelancing and have a better time playing the game than being stuck in that situation. So I would have probably liked to have pulled more people out of there and out of that situation with me mm -hmm. um, and gotten them away from that environment. Okay, okay. And you know um, Shelf pretty well in terms of, you know, the, the, the stuff you've seen behind the scenes, the videos he sent you, things that he's proud of that, like... Um, only losers would brag about but um, out of everything you know now do you think he would win in court if he uh, lawyered up uh, and presented some sort of case against uh, what we're doing um personally no I don't think so um mm -hmm. one I think if he brought up something um me personally I have proof that I uh shows that what he's doing you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I have videos of, of the, the booting and the, the selling of booting panels and lag switches yes. and things like that. I have screenshots and videos of that. Yeah. Um, Cr criminal I'm not really inclined. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not inclined to expose those to everybody. No, no, no. Those are kind of more for me in case he does really does pursue something. I do have evidence mm -hmm. to, to protect myself um, in that situation that it's not if he goes for a defamation of character or something like that mm -hmm. it's not really defamation of character because i have the proof right here 
that this is what he's doing. It's not defamation of character when it's truth. It's fact. Yeah, people have to look up the definition of, of, of defamation because, I mean, um, people's reputation would have to be harmed to the point where they lost uh, money or uh, some sort of um, em emotional uh, damage or something like that, okay? So, um, uh does he have money to waste on lawyers? I mean, have a crack at it, man. Um, if you want to lawyer up, uh, go right ahead. If you want to, um, if you want to bring me to court, there's no way in heck I'm coming to the states. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta come down and you gotta sue me in a Canadian court, and that is gonna be fun because um, I don't even think that I need to hire a lawyer to take you on in court. I mean. Um, uh, having having seen uh, all of these uh, things and learned things about you, um, they're all true. Uh, we've all looked at the uh, evidence together collectively, and uh, you really don't have a, a strong case. So um, if you wanna if you wanna go that route, um, go for it. You know, and uh, we'll be waiting. File the case. I'll be here. Um, also, uh, Matt, I wanted to ask, um, have you ever actually seen evidence of these, this pro tool in action with him? Um, he's, he, uh, and how does it work? He, he can literally eavesdrop on conversations, uh, people say. Yeah, he has, uh, the party tool. Uh, I remember when he bought it, he bragged about it, mm -hmm. uh, obviously boasting himself and his self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, uh, so basically with that party tool, he can, from my understanding, he can see who's in party, even if the party you're set to offline. Um, he can still see who's in party. He can listen to the party without being in it. He can um, crash the party uh, completely, which you'll see if it happens, you'll look at the party and see everyone says disconnected. There's a red X on your name. Um, he could join party and lock the party to where you can't leave you can't boot him out of the party you can't he basically takes over the party mm -hmm. um and you can't do anything about it except turn off your xbox that's the only way to get out of the party is to turn your xbox off or he unlocks the party yeah kill the service or uh whatever needs to be done um and do you know where to and do you know where he got this tool um i'm guessing uh a lot of these things came from uh sin Mm -hmm. To my understanding, from what I've seen, a lot of these items and uh, merchandises come from uh, Sin because him and Sin have a great, great uh, partnership between the two of them, mm -hmm. not Daff and Sin itself. Um, yeah, it, it's it's mainly shelf and Sin, um, whether it's uh, the leader of sin or whatever um i'm guessing it's multiple people in sin i was uh at one point i was added to a chat that was uh selling the the, the panels okay um i uh i think he he kind of claims he's in business with that mm -hmm. but i think it's more he just kind of like gets commission for bringing people in to that that situation uh and selling those kind of things to people mm -hmm. yeah he's a petty salesman i guess exactly yeah um we'll try to kind of finish your part off um on something more positive do you have a favorite memory of daf and uh if you can t let us know there was a lot of moments that i had great times with those guys uh the members make it enjoyable um, when Shelf was in a better mindset of things before mm -hmm. he kind of like started getting more like viewing me as uh, an employee more than a friend okay. is uh, when I would enjoy my time more. And there's one specific time that I, I still think about that I think was a wholesome moment for uh, me and Daph is there was a time where Nick's went to work and then she basically was like because i i was kind of known for getting myself booted when nix wasn't around i would get myself in trouble i would be fighting people i shouldn't be fighting i i would be you know what i'm saying i'd be in a situation i shouldn't mm -hmm. um and she basically asked rose and shelf to babysit me while she was at work um and i was kind of by myself just running around looking for trouble and rose spawned in on me with a bunch of other daft members 
and then they pretty much kidnapped me tied me up threw me on the back of the horse and were like we're babysitting you you're not allowed to do anything and then shelf spawned in and shelf's like maddie i'm coming to save you and oh, wow he started like shooting rows and they were joking around and shelf picked me up threw me on the back of his horse and rode off and saved the day pretty much it was kind of like a funny moment i made a tiktok about it uh it's oh, still crazy. on my tiktok sick um because it was such a wholesome moment for me as friends in a group that uh we could joke around like that awesome uh great memory I and mean, yeah uh, you know he saved uh he saved you from death impending doom exactly cool cool what about uh nick's uh what's your favorite memory my favorite memory with daff it's just the late nights where we would all just run around together we wouldn't even be shooting anything. We would just run around, hunt, and spend quality time together as friends were my favorite times. Mm -hmm. Now, there was one in particular night um, <laughs> that we all were, I think we were all in Wapiti running around the springs. And Shelf like tied up me and Calypso and was like trying to drown us but it was just so funny because everyone was having such a good time there was no fights no cheating involved okay the, the and good it's like those were the best times yeah the clean times right simpler times yes yeah when when you're just having fun with your friends there's no fights with cheats nothing like that it's just you enjoy the game. You actually have time to enjoy it. Yeah, and cheats just brings on more negativity and egotistical bullshit. It just brings more harm than good in the end. Honestly. I mean, people need to wake up to this kind of stuff. For real. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what about you, Lily? Uh, what was your favorite memory? Honestly, there were just random occasions where we would just... We wouldn't be in fights, but... You'd have a posse or two of us, and we'd just be running around a map. We might end up in St. Denis or, you know, Valentine. We'd steal wagons, sit there, chase each other down, you know, rant, have wagon races through the middle of town, just, just spending time together like the family they'd said that we were, you yeah. know? And it felt like it at that point. Everybody was happy. There was no stress. It wasn't fighting. There wasn't no drama. It was, you are just happy to be together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, could you say that, um, you know, things uh, went downhill as soon as everyone started cheating? I would definitely, definitely agree with that assessment. It's a very um, common denominator amongst uh, crews. I mean, I, I'd be willing to uh, bet that, um, you know, none of these crews have really profited from uh, cheating uh, in terms of, uh, you know, recreational happiness and things like that i mean i'm sure a bunch of them would rather go back to how things were but obviously uh cheating seems to be here to stay and um and and then people are forced to you know act in certain ways to combat uh other people cheating so it's kind of like a checkmate yeah it's kind of stuck here to stay i mean me and my crew don't cheat we don't fight cheating we don't do that mm -hmm. um so if my advice to people that don't want to deal with that situation is find yourself a group that's willing to put the pride aside, put the egos aside. Um, we're actively recruiting. The Discord has plenty of room for you guys in the gaming Discord or in my crew, either one. If people really don't want to deal with that type of situation, we, we tend to pull on lag switchers, god mode players. We don't fight that type of situation. We look more for a fair, even fight. Yeah. I can only imagine, like, even if I was cheating, I would always miss those clean uh, fights that I always l used to look for and things like that because um, I, I want to get better and uh, there's no way of knowing that if uh, people can't die and things like that or you're getting booted. So um, uh, that's probably uh, the biggest cancer uh, for me in this game. But uh, let's uh, move on to uh, Grem two seconds here. Grem, can you talk about your favorite memory? My favorite, and this is something I did with all of our new members I'd bring in, 
-hmm. I love taking them, stealing a wagon, a regular coach, I should say, loading that sucker up. And even though, you know, season members be telling them, no, don't get on a wagon with her. She's going to kill you. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would play it off as they were just, you know, trying to cycle them out. They were safe. We're just going on an adventure. And I always, it was kind of like my own little initiation without it being an in initiation. Like I would ha get them run over by a train. Uh, Lily was there for one of those. <laughs> <laughs> or go up to Armadillo and drive them off a cliff up there. Uh, hop off and quickly throw dynamite and blow them up. Like, I was always doing something mm -hmm. with our new members just to have fun, no PvP, just to showcase how great and how much fun we had. Mm -hmm. And that is something I do miss. That that was always fun. Yeah, and definitely having to sign waivers to ride horses with you because you wreck every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's another thing. Nobody gets on the back of my horse without making sure their life insurance is paid in full and they have signed a waiver. I am not responsible. Damn. That's rough. <laughs> um, okay, well, I appreciate uh, all that, guys. Um, I wanted to move on to the uh, next section. Um, can someone... Um, Kind of volunteer to give the lowdown of DAF's uh, history, how they started, um, and the uh, kind of like the uh, different phases that uh, you know made them evolve into uh, what they are today. When Shell first started DAF, we, me, him, and Ragnar, aka Saint, we were all in Wagon Masters together. Mm -hmm. Uh. Shelf was in charge of wagon security, and he decided, you know, he wanted to do more than just protect wagons and do trader role all the time, and you know, a few other roles, and you know, mess around. He wanted to be more PvP, okay. so he left and created DAF, and uh. When DAF first started, it was a really good crew. Yep. Shelf was against any type of cheating. God mode, OTR, because that was a big thing at the time. Doing anything besides letting skill speak for itself. Mm -hmm. He had a bit of an ego, but back then, he honestly was good at PvP back then. He was a hard person to fight. And he cheated a lot less. He he didn't cheat. Okay, okay. Yeah, he had a panel. But he never used it. Hmm. We knew he had it. We knew he could if he wanted to. But it was very rarely that he would ever use it. It had to be something major for him to pull it out. Mm-hmm. And that was something a lot of people respected about him because at that time, Mob was really big. SYN was getting started. It was getting big. And nobody wanted to fight Mob because, well, back then, that's all they were known for was booting. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to go up against them. And Shelf always said, I won't to have a clean crew of quality PVPers that we can go through and stand against anybody with no problem. Okay. And for the longest time it was. Mm -hmm. He was a totally different person back then. He was very big hearted. He would give you the shirt off of his back if it would help you. Wow. He cared about his members he heard them. Everybody had a voice. If there was a disagreement with another crew, he would actually sit down, talk to them, get things worked out, and get the BS stopped. Mm -hmm. Like, he, it was 
a great crew. It really was. Yeah. Um, well, obviously there's a couple of factors that led to the decline, like we talked about. Um, we, we can kind of move on to, um, you know, a couple of other bad apples that we should discuss. Um, I can... I can kind of uh, throw out names and uh, y'all can uh, give me your uh, feedback on them, okay? So let's start with um, uh, the infamous Ronan. Uh, anybody know this guy? Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Quite well. Okay. And uh, why is he someone to, to stay away from? Ronan really likes to use Cronus. Mm-hmm. So if you're in like an up close personal battle with him, you're probably not going to get many kills because his controller is wired like crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, I've noticed if you snipe him, he has a very little chance at killing you. He is not a very good sniper, and that's because his Cronus is hooked up close range. Okay. And you can't snipe, uh, you can't use your normal skills to snipe uh, at far range with the sniper, if you, even with the Cronus? I just, I just don't think he's that good of a sniper. Mm. How no, well? he, he's not. Uh, before I actually met Matt Ronan, we were all in a Discord server, a friend server, together. And he was bragging about being a defensive glitch player, he used it to uh, free game, and me and him got into a discussion about it, and it got a little heated. He told me that he was so good at free aim that he could free aim using a sniper. Crazy. And everybody that PvPs knows that it doesn't matter what card you're using when you use the Carcano or the Rolling Block you're like it gives you a tiny bit of insist but it's all free aim and mm -hmm. i told him that he couldn't be too smart or no i asked him are you really that stupid to believe that you're good at free aim because you have to use it with the sniper that that's nothing to brag about everybody has to do it and just over that comment, he started threatening to dox me. Wow. And did, and, he, did he do it? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, I was told to stop talking to him, don't engage. I was told to stand down because I was getting ready to fire up and really have this conversation and be as toxic as he was starting to be right back. But... He never did. Like, I have nothing to hide. So, I don't care if someone doxes me or not. Mm -hmm. Anybody looks at, you know, my TikTok, they'll see stuff more of me anyway. So, it's not like I've never hidden what I look like or anything. I, you know, what has he got on me? Absolutely nothing. He can yeah. post me. I don't, I don't care. If he doesn't like you he can talk shit well i shouldn't say that he can talk crap to you but if you turn around and give it right back he will dox he will constantly jump you he does not know how to fight clean mm -hmm. he's not a good defensive player as he is up close he has to use the Coronas to get the kills. If he didn't have the Coronas, he wouldn't be nothing to kill. Uh, you get him out of defensive, and he runs like a scalded dog every time. Damn. And if he can't get defensive back, or even with defensive, he can't beat you, he immediately runs to God mode. Mm. Because he jumped me one night. And I was with a couple of my crew members, and we literally sat there and watched him running back and forth at Flatneck, trying to get God mode, because that's what we were fighting, and he couldn't get it. And he didn't realize the reason he couldn't get it is because I done let him camp down. 
that way he couldn't go. And he got so mad that he couldn't get it to work. Where Petey's God Mode was broken. And Emerald is a pain in the butt to get. He left the game and left the people he brought to jump us with all alone. He seems like he has uh, similar characteristics uh, to Shelf a little bit. Maybe minus the Cronus uh, setup. But do you think that Ronin was influenced by Shelf? They influenced each other. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken... Uh, I have heard that Ronan now calls Shelf and Rose mom and dad. Damn! That does not surprise me in the slightest. Well then. Well, well, well. Um, let's move on to um, Anubis uh, slash clown slash whatever. And it's hilarious to say because I've, I've seen tons of screenshots from this guy get leaked to me and uh and things like that um i'm not gonna be you know a dick and show uh screenshots you know but like uh, um i definitely saw some things that were concerning his uh conversation with people uh with girls and stuff like that um lying about his age uh all of the above you know what i mean he seems like a complete uh creep i don't even know why uh people would want someone like that in their crew is is he actually good can he can he actually fight or uh what mm. no <laughs> no i've I, I got this one uh he cannot fight for the life of him half the time you'll be in a fight brother will show up for like two minutes and then poof he's gone or he won't respond at all okay like, there were plenty of nights where we would call SOSs, he would be online playing, and he would never show up. Wow. And he is very much a creep. I have actually received multiple different women telling me that he would message them randomly, tell me that he would not leave them alone. Mm -hmm. He would repeatedly message them over and over again. Um... I've also had multiple people tell me that he has told them multiple different ages. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's told people he's as young as 26, from what I've been told, Cap. up to 30s. Mm -hmm. So, he definitely lies. He's definitely not uh, the, that age, just by telling by his skin complexion. Um, wh why does he? Why is he so hungry to text the girls? And uh, you know, what wh what does he get out of it? Um, is he lonely? Are these girls the appropriate age to be conversing with him? I think that he is very lonely and looks for validation in anyone that will give it to him. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I've been told, the ages range very, very much. Um, I. Th from people that I know personally that have came to me, the youngest one I've ever actually talked to personally was like 19 or 20. Okay. And the oldest woman was in her like 60s, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay. So no confirmed uh, EDP activities um, from, uh, from On text. my end. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll let uh, that one slide. Uh, and also there was a... Um, troublesome um ex-member uh who's no longer in the crew this is what i understand um it was a daft demon the accusations of her killing her child aside her and her mother llama mama they were horrible leaders and they were horrible members Mm -hmm. Their favorite thing was to find members. They basically wouldn't kiss their asses and not agree to everything they would say. And so they would decide they don't want that member in the crew anymore. And they'd run to leadership, making up lies about them, starting drama with them. And Shelf ignored it mm -hmm. i would have full-blown arguments with them in leadership chat protecting the members mm -hmm. uh during sos's demon would either show or not show 
she would be screaming and yelling in the party. Her mm. mother would be screaming and yelling, panicking, demanding that we come help her, even though they could not take the time to tell us where they were on the map. It was, I'm getting flanked, I'm getting overrun, come help, come help, I need you now. Why won't anybody help us? And we'd be fighting two to three to three and a half posses. Mm -hmm. And so we would be there fighting, but they would get killed so much, they'd be pushed away from us. Damn. And telling them to, you know, do what you can, fast travel to the nearest, you know, as close to us as possible, get to us. We can't get to you right now. And that was never acceptable to either of them. Mm -hmm. And Shelf would get sick and tired of hearing everybody complain about them, but wouldn't really do anything. He would talk to them and talk to them and talk to them. And that was about it. We started losing members because of them. Wow. And Lilith has a bad habit of going after other people and crews. Running her mouth, bringing their kids up into it, causing the whole crew to get jumped just to get them. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in. Then she also almost ruined both branches of Y2K and Bucko when they branched with them? Well, yes. Because uh, they had friends in Y2K. After they finally got kicked from DAF, they attempted to join Y2K. Uh, they were forced to remove them because we wanted nothing to do with them. Shelf made a post saying that they were free game. Anybody could jump them. And when a member of the Buckos took Shelf at his word and started jumping them, making TikToks about them, Shelf changed up and said, you know, we're not going to jump them, we're not going to do anything. And this person did not want to stop because, you know... Here we have the proof that, you know, she has charges against her for, you know, not protecting her child. So instead of Shelf being a reasonable person, he took that member of the Buckos and booted him offline for two days. Oh, and he had to go get a new router. Down. Just to be able to get back on. Yeah, I remember that because that was around the time that uh, Shelf actually, uh, I forgot to mention this before, uh, the toxicity of Shelf itself. Um, he actually told me that if I ender, ever ended up in a lobby with Y2K members to let him know because he's coming in to boot, he would go out of his way to boot Y2K members on purpose at that time. Always coming in to boot, never to fight. Yeah, there is actually one occasion where I ran into uh, the Buckos and Y2K after a trail ride they did. And uh, he spawned in behind me because I was like, hey, there's Buckos and a bunch of Y2K members. They must have just finished something. He was like, don't leave that session. I'm coming in. And then miraculously afterwards, Y2K members started dropping out of lobby. And uh, I know from my understanding is that they were getting booted. And I don't know if they were aware of that, but... I mean, after this, they will be aware that that was Shelf purposely jumping in lobbies to boot Y2K members. And then even when I was in DAF, he pretty much gave the okay anytime you see a Y2K member to start farming them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's 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 move on to the uh, last um, player on the list here. Um, anybody remember Neuromania? It's been very controversial since it was released, oh. but... There was proof that went out that he had sent a video exposing himself to a minor. No! And when that was shown, and that, sh that, that proof was presented to Shelf, 
the response that was sent from that other end was, well, this video was sent to said minor when they were only three days from turning 18. So it was a slide, essentially, and that person's been protected by DAF ever since. Well, well, well. Protecting EDP enthusiasts. Not a good look. Not a good look. I have no uh, sympathy for that bullshit. Um, if you're, you know, significantly older than the people that you're texting, you should just lay off. You know what I mean? I'm up there too. I'm not doing any sort of, uh, you know, activities like that. But um, I think that the older you get, the more responsibility you have of, you know, influencing people uh, the right way and uh, not being uh, opportunistic and trying to prey on the young and the naive. I just think in general, you know, all the dr all that drama, um, all the drama that comes from uh, gaming just turns into uh, an information war in the end. You know what I mean? Everybody just kind of just gets at each other's throats and, uh, you know, no one can physically hurt anybody, you know, so everything has to be done uh, at a distance and... Uh, it's just it's just slander and uh, who can embarrass each other the most and uh -huh, I got you and I got you you know and um, even when we um, did find um, info on uh, shelf I didn't feel any sort of um, happiness or anything like that I I I was kind of um, creeped out uh, dealing with this uh, stuff because I know how much of a mental terrorist he is and once you see uh, his face once you put a face to uh, the person, everything changes, you know what I mean? And uh, it's like he just looks like a hollow shell of what he claims to be. For this part, um, I'd like all of you to uh, kind of participate um, in, in giving me feedback on this. Um, I, I'm, I'm really curious to, to uh, know what what does make a good leader and uh, and, and maybe for people watching uh, at home and stuff, maybe they could take uh, these lessons and uh learn from them you know don't make the same mistakes as uh you know some of these other crews have done um so uh you know what makes a good leader uh, i would say the first one is definitely uh communication skills right so do you guys think that uh shelf has a good communication skills when it comes to like i don't know clarity uh listening to people or you know adapting to uh you know other people's communication no not at all. No one. And uh, and it, it, people he favorites, yes. And people that he doesn't really view as a benefit to him, no. He mm -hmm. won't really take their their concerns or communication into uh, into consideration. Uh, mm -hmm. There's multiple occasions where I I would have a member come to me about a problem, and then when I brought it to shelf, he'd be like, "Well, that's more their problem, not mine." Mm -hmm. But then if, like, someone that he favorited came to him with a problem, he would be like, uh, yeah, let's get right on this. I'll talk to this person. I'll talk to this person. Or I'll do this. I'll do that. And then he makes a lot of promises of he's going to take care of something and then doesn't doesn't really take care of it. Just takes claim that he's going to take care of it. Yeah, the And I think uh, it's poor on his part to do so. Um, communication is a huge part, like you're saying, of being a leader. Uh, mm -hmm. clear communication at that not just being like okay or i'll take care of it um showing that you actually fulfilled the deed of taking care of it is a huge part of the communication yeah. between uh solving a problem uh whether it's getting everyone in a party or talking to multiple people about it um he doesn't do that he left that to his uh underlings in the leadership ranks to do so Okay, so he also has poor problem-solving skills. I've noticed that too uh, with the things I've heard. Um, what about, um, is he very knowledgeable about the game? Does yeah, he, I would say he's pretty yeah. knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and like he understands the game, ca game mechanics and he knows about strategies and the best uh, weapons in the game and things like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would say so. Um, what about like uh, the way he built the crew and just uh, crew building in general? Um, does he uh, f foster a sense of uh, unity amongst uh, everybody? He will make it seem like you have a voice 
even when you don't. That is one of the tactics to get you into death. He'll tell the members that he'll speak to them when he's like, he'll be like, we'll have a leader meeting and then we'll have a member meeting to explain and you all can tell us what you think. He doesn't take those opinions into consideration when okay. doing it. Okay. But does he, uh, is he encouraging uh, generally? Um, is, does he motivate uh, other members? Does he boost morale or does he uh, do the opposite? Yeah, he tries to boost morale from my time in DAF. He, he tried to. We would, even if we lost a fight or quote unquote lost a fight, it's a game. Um, he would still be like, all right, guys, you did a great job. I'm proud we stuck it out as long as we did. Um, we, we did great. We did what we could. You know what I'm saying? He would, he would try to just like better the situation. But even like there is times where like we would do really good in a fight and he'd be like, he, he would make some kind of like there was one time where we won a fight that we haven't like won against that person in a while um and it was kind of like there i i was the general at the time so i was in charge of the fight and i led us to a good victory against them and they're like oh maddie you did a great job this and that and i was like well you guys never really had a general like me i'm guessing and then shelf kind of came in and knocked me down a peg and was like well our previous generals weren't as active Instead of just being like, yeah, man, you did a great job. He kind of just like knocked me down a peg. Crap. Okay. And I, I'm guessing that's because he kind of felt threatened that the members were respecting me and not him through that situation. Okay. Um, would you say that he's uh, just in general, do you, would you say that he's uh, understanding as a person? No, it's, it's his way. Yeah. Yep, it is definitely his way or no way. Like he doesn't consider emotions and the perspectives of other people? Um, not really. No. No. Okay. Um, would you say that he's patient? Not necessarily. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Um, what about, uh, technical skills? Uh, does he, is he, is he strong as a fighter? Um, if he fought, uh, your average person, would he, would he win? Would no, an average not in my person? opinion. Yeah, just like a clean, let's say if you were to fight clean, okay? Um, would you say that he's a good player? Maybe at one point, but now it's, he's used the cheats for so long that, it went from being a crutch to being a full-out wheelchair, if you want to take that for a metaphor. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about, uh, you know, taking ownership and responsibility? Uh, does he, you know, let, let's say you guys have wins or losses. Does he, does he accept uh, responsibility for either? You know, does he take, uh, does he hold L's uh, appropriately? And is he humble when he wins? No. Um, no. Not no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm -mm. If he loses, he is talking a lot of shit. He's wanting to get their IPs. He's wanting to boot them Damn. and continue to jump them. And if they win, his ego comes out to play and it's we're so much better. Everyone kiss my ass, kiss my ass. 30 I TikToks getting made back to back about how wonderful he is and how great the daft's the best. Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's wild. What a waste of content. Yeah, he'll take credit for, for a lot of wins that he didn't contribute to. Okay, yeah, so he'll take credit for wins he's not even a part of. He doesn't have, um, you know, much integrity seeing how uh, non-transparent he is just by... Uh, communicating within the crew and stuff like that do you think that he's uh an honest person overall no 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 probably the least honest person one of the least honest people i've ever seen uh, on this game do you is he uh is he reliable as a as a friend you know um i wouldn't no. say so anymore okay he he used to be okay like before the toxicity and everything you could count on him. Now, he talks a good game and never delivers. Okay. And if you don't kiss his butt after he does something, 
or if you stand against him on a subject that he should not be doing, then he will create up lies about you, discredit you, and make it where, okay, I have to be right. Their tooth cannot get out. Gonna fight against it. Fuck them. Okay. That's exactly what he does. Well, I'm dissecting um, Shelf um, a lot here because, um, you know, we're all kind of pointing to him uh, for the downfall of DAF and, uh, you know, what they're, what they're reduced to now. Um, and that's why uh, just kind of breaking down and more specifically uh, the type of person he is and, you know, why all this stuff kind of came about. But um, to be honest, um, I was kind of hoping that uh, DAF can be salvaged. You know, um, if a weak leader is responsible for the fall of his crew, logically, he should be replaced. Uh, but because of his attachment and his uh, stubborn to let the crew go, even if it's for the better, um, I'm told that it will never happen. Um, and uh, the only like option left would be to uh, disband the crew, if I'm uh, if I'm correct. Right. Yeah, no, he exactly. will never let anyone have that crew. No. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think I, I kind of have a different opinion on that. I think he would hand it off if he found the right person. Okay. Um, But so far he can't find the right person. And I think overall at this point he's kind of stuck with it because he did try to hand it off back in, what, December? And then it was a failed attempt. He actually disclosed to me that back in December he, he had thoughts of disbanding mm -hmm. and ending DAF. But then uh, he decided against it. I don't know what the factor was to decide against it. Maybe he got better because because everyone speculated it was because of the cancer, right? That he was like thinking of handing it off. Yeah, but to my understanding, it was more he he was tired of doing it. Okay. Um, I I'm guessing maybe the cancer had something to do with it and why he was so tired of doing it because he couldn't handle everything. Mm -hmm. But um, he definitely uh. Definitely, I think he would be looking for a... Because from my understanding from someone that else is close to him is one of the reasons he was so upset I left is because he's looking to hand it down to someone. And maybe he thought that would have been me, but I don't want that name. Damn. I don't want to carry it. Uh, his choices over the last year has completely dragged that name, Death Angel Federation, through the mud. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, If you ask... Majority of other crews or other players about DAF, they'll tell you the same. Free XP or you're going to get booted. Yeah. Yeah. And the crew uh, already began imploding from the inside, if I uh, understand correctly. I've seen uh, Discord conversations. I've had people reach out uh, saying why they left. Um, there isn't much positive things to, uh, left to say about uh, the crew, but beca because... Like from what I gather, they they aren't uh, that strong. Their numbers have plummeted, and they create uh, way too much drama internally and externally uh, to kind of uh, function in a normal manner. There's a lot of distrust in that group when I left, yeah. um, and then even now, actively being outside of the group, and how many members of theirs have come to me with screenshots or or said something to me in a party or have messaged me. They they have almost a dozen rats in that group and shelf doesn't have as tight nick of his group as he oh, thinks yeah. he does he doesn't have as loyal as a group as he thinks he does oh yeah um, there's a lot of members that come out and and give out information and i'm assuming you've probably gotten some information from current members yeah uh, and I've, that, I've had uh fa fake rats pretending to uh want to come on the pod and just leaking uh conversations but it's okay because um I'm not really hiding anything. Like everybody knows that I'm, uh, you know, planning to take down uh, these crews um, from an exposure standpoint. Um, I'm looking to uh, stop the cancers of the game, and that's what my honest intention is. I'm not, uh, you know, desperately trying to push for views and trying to be popular or or uh, to gain clout. If anything, I don't even like clout. Um, it does make me anxious uh, doing all of this stuff, especially when I'm just trying to work and, uh, you know, produce videos and, uh, you know, ask the right questions. But um, like I always say, 
um, the people with the biggest skeletons in their closets are the ones that are going to hate first. So just watch out for them in the comments. And um, they're always going to question the integrity of my sources and like, oh, it's got to be fake and uh, oh, this never happened and whatever. And it's always these biased people. Are they really talking to the people involved or are they just coming to me trying to slander uh, the video? I've asked multiple people, uh, you know, well, if you want screenshots, I mean, I'm not going to leak screenshots and go back to back and forth with these little petty uh, situations here. I've got better stuff to do. But it's always uh, ironic how no one seems to know what the uh, the accused uh, is thinking. No one. It's almost like they play they play it off like they didn't talk to him. You know, even um, Mob Bad Boy. I mean, that was the best one. Everyone's like, where's the proof? Where's the proof? Well, I mean, he sent the screenshots. Go. He has the screenshots, too. Um, are you guys playing stupid and you already saw the screenshots or are you, you know, hatching some sort of plan for sabotaging and stuff like that? But that's kind of like what I see. And uh, it, it, it kind of seems like a losing war on their end because they're clearly all scared, uh, not necessarily uh, of me, but of, uh, you know, past events. Going back to uh, the the DAF thing and... Um, and uh, Shelf kind of running it to the ground. I think the most critical thing led to Shelf's downfall is the, his uh, compulsive lying uh, about virtually everything he said in the past about himself. Learning everything, we were we were pretty hurt, especially um, you know the past members uh, in in, uh, in in the crew. Um, I know that um, Graham uh, was really hurt. Um, I mean, all of you were for sure, but. Um, we have collectively analyzed new data online and put all the pieces together. Um, everything is legitimate. This is not uh, defamation. We'll talk about uh, what we know and leave it up to the uh, members uh, of DAF to decide what they want to do. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go on a uh, slandering speech or, or uh, you know, push out all these uh, these documents or whatever to, uh, you know, try to, like, convince people. Um, I couldn't give a crap about what you think. I know what I saw, and uh, I think everybody here kind of thinks the same way. Um, it's pretty unanimous because uh, I am pursuing the truth, uh, whether anybody likes it or not, whether you're on the bad side or on the good side. Um, my ultimate goal is to uh, to expose um, the uh, criminal acts and the uh, factors that are ruining the uh, game on a daily basis. And anybody that defends them, um, once again, are just as culpable. So uh, we encourage uh, you to question everything that you're told, um, especially within the crew. And uh, we hope you go to the right person for answers, you know. Um, so uh, right now we're gonna confirm everything. Um, we're gonna we're gonna give the floor to Grim, uh, the main OG of DAF, um, and was arguably the closest person to Shelf, um, and her insight is probably the most uh, significant. So uh, Grim, uh, the floor is all yours, and uh, you know, go ahead and uh, you know break it down for us. Let's get into it then. Oh, uh, when I first met Shelf. He seemed like a genuine person, big hearted and cared about his friends and crew members. And we had each other's backs since 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. And like, I used to have so much respect for him. The way he talked about his life, about his, you know, cancer, his veterinarian practice and, you know, his family. Mm hmm. You know, he was a very genuine person, and he cared about everything, and he cared about other people. Uh, he first brought me into DAF. I was leaving another crew, and he wanted, you know, I came to him and told him I wanted to leave. I was thinking about joining DAF, and he said yes. And in this other crew, in my previous crew, I did all the recruiting. And I had done built up a small reputation that when I really start recruiting, I can pull members. If I'm not distracted, you know, I can recruit 20 people in a day. And so he immediately brought me in. No trial period, no nothing, immediately made head recruiter. He was really big on staying clean. That was his biggest thing for PvP. 
nobody cheated. It didn't matter if we were fighting God modes. He taught us how to take them out of God mode and not go to their level. If we were fighting OTRs, then, you know, we made the best of it. We did not go OTR back. Mm -hmm. And to be how adamant he was about going OTR or cheating in general, me, Saint, and some others, we end up fighting a whole posse of OTRs. And we decided, screw this, we're going OTR as well. And when he found out about it, it he was mad because we broke one of his rules. We cheated. Now, I ended up, like, I was there for a long time. And me and Shelf, you know, he started changing some. He started... You know, beating more, he started lagging, and that was after we had some new members join the crew that did all that, and they were encouraging him to, hey, instead of fighting these people, you know, they're lagging, they're doing this, let's just work together and hit them off. And so, at first, he was like, yeah, you know, not really, and they were like, come on, Shelf. What's the point of having this stuff if you don't use it? And next thing I know, there he goes. He was literally on a slippery slope at that point. And he could not balance himself on it. And he started falling down. Like before that, it didn't matter if you were online and an SOS called. If you didn't want to fight, that was okay. You could play with whoever you wanted to. It was no problem. Everybody who knows me knows I know a lot of people in this game. I play with a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. I am loyal to the crew I'm in, but I'm also loyal to my friends. And if they need me in a fight, I'm right there. Or if we just want to mess around, we go mess around. Well, one of my friends, uh, Shelf did not care for. He joined... A crew that is known for booting stuff. And he was a pretty... Besides, you know, minor stuff. He was pretty clean. Mm -hmm. And Shelf was accusing him of booting him. Well, yeah. Shelf accused my friend of trying to hit him offline. When I know for a fact he didn't have a panel. He doesn't even know how to sniff IPs, nothing. Me and him got into a big argument. Uh, I was already sick of how Llama Mama was in parties, how she was as a leader. I was sick of how things were going, and so I left. And I was going for four or five months. And after I had been inactive on game or Xbox period for a few weeks, he came to me and he told me that his cancer was back. And he asked me if I would rejoin Daph, help him with recruiting, help him run the crew because he wasn't sure if he wanted to disband or hand the crew over to me because he knew if he handed the crew over to me it would be in very good hands members wouldn't leave like they did the first time he tried to do this and handed it over to saint and you know members he lost 19 or 20 members when he did it the first time yeah but i had a lot of respect in the crew and so he knew it wouldn't go like that so he wanted me to come back and help him and eventually take the crew over. Mm -hmm. So I came back. Uh, I was handling getting alliances up, handling recruitments, being the one to encourage everybody, keep everybody together and direct them in fights. I I was doing everything. Mm -hmm. He 
around this time he decided uh BVG left they disbanded and they merged into DAF and you know we had Rose there they you know she was with somebody else she was with Sick Few at the time when that happened and you know her and Shelf were kind of close but you know it on a founder member level nothing you know scandalous after they reformed she ended up leaving again and she started hanging around shelf hanging around us after she was brought basically brought in she was crew but she wasn't crew at the time she started getting in his ear encouraging him to be more toxic and he started making posts in our chat saying you know we're fighting people that cheat and everything so we're gonna do it all back together and then they end up get together and he really went downhill it was always Rose telling us, uh, Shelf's still here, but he's throwing up blood. He's, you know, too sick because of the cancer, so, you know, y'all got to give him time. And then he would come back and sound a little sick, but it was business as usual. Not what you would expect from somebody just throwing up blood and damn near passing out. Mm-hmm. Like, I know if that was happening to me, I wouldn't worry about a leadership meeting. I wouldn't worry about getting back on the game that night. Yep. But here he would come in like nothing happened. He started around this time is when he brought Llama Mama and Demon Lilith back into the crew. And AOC started jumping death to get to them. The shelf decided that he was going to threaten to take Red Scarlet's account, Twisted's account, Derek's, and some KOBK members' accounts. Rose was telling him to do it. There was a few other leaders telling him to do it. And I was the only person that stood up to him and was telling him no and why he shouldn't do it. I was standing up to him, telling him that taking accounts is wrong. Threatening to do it is beyond ridiculous. Rose and Shelf both told me that taking accounts is just like booting. Hmm. They didn't see a difference in it. And I told them both that taking someone's account is so much more petty. It is nothing like booting. When you boot somebody, if you just regular boot them or even hard boot them, the worst that that happens is they have to get a new router. They can get back online. If you steal somebody's account, that account is gone forever. All their hard work, all the passes that we will never see again in this game are completely gone. And because I would not fall in line and Shelf started listening to me, Rose saw me as a threat. Because I could get him to listen. I could get him to start seeing reason. So, she had it made up in her mind. I had to go. I was with uh, Derek at this time. And so, you know, I'd play with the crew. Then after SOSs were done, me and, and his SOSs were done because he was KOBK and AOC. I'd go hang with him. We It'd just be us for a while. And then... Some nights we'd go hang with his crew. 
they never asked me information on death. Only thing I'd get asked is, how's everyone over in death? And I'd let them know everybody's doing good, and that would be the end of it. But Ronan and Rose started accusing me of being a snake and giving them information on death, which I never did. And instead of Shelf coming to me and asking me about it, because like before, he was worried I was giving Derek information and he wanted screenshots of our conversations. Like he was that paranoid. And, you know, I would answer his questions. He would always tell me he believed me. After I was kicked and labeled a snake, he came to me the very next day and apologizing and telling me he just didn't know what to do. This isn't what he wanted. He never wanted me to get kicked. He never wanted me to leave. And how sorry he was this happened. I considered, you know, trying to really work it out with him, get to the bottom of everything and go back. He literally threw years of friendship away over a piece of tail. Yep. And guys, y'all are not going to want to believe what I'm about to tell y'all. But I swear I have the proof of it. Yeah, we all saw Shelf it. has been lying to this whole community. He is not a veterinarian. There are no records anywhere of him ever finishing college, much less going to veterinarian school. Are you and serious? he loves to down people because of their living situation, because of where they live. He has made this persona that he lives in a big house, he has a private helicopter, he had his own business he's supposed to be a veterinarian specialist surgeon and none of it is true he actually lives in a trailer park really and serious? as far as the cancer that is also false yeah he he's... does not have wow. cancer I'm yeah. going to be sick. It was his father that passed away that had cancer. His sister and her son that had cancer. Because I was sent his mother's Facebook and all over her his mom's Facebook, which links back to his, and I checked his out as well. She has posts of the father that passed, the sister, and the grandson of having cancer. There's not a single one of shelf. Not one. This man has been lying to us about everything. And I'm gonna be sick. that what hurts the most. That's horrible. Yeah, that's evil. Is, he has been preying on everybody's emotions and sympathies. He's literally taking what his family has gone through, the sympathy they have gotten, their hardships, and trying to make it his own. He is that starved for attention that he has to fake it. And I will say, even though he has lied to me the entire time I've known him, finding out that our whole friendship was based on lies and completely a lie. Yes, when I was going through a hard time financially, and almost homeless. This is not news to anybody. Well, most people that know me. He did help me. No. It was not the amount. 
that Hillman Rose is saying. He literally paid for two, maybe three phone cards. And he gave me the gas, a hundred dollars to get where I live now. It's never been thousands of dollars. It's been around like what, $130, $140? For that, it was about, because the phone card was, one was like 45, the other one or other two was 65. Okay. So it wasn't a whole lot. That is not including what he would pay me for being a leader, which would run between $15 up to 30 depending on what he felt like giving. And it wasn't once a week or every other day. It was here and there. You never knew. I'm going to be sick. But and... everything that he is, his whole life that he portrays he has is a total lie. And I wanted to be sure about this. So the information that I was given and shown, I did my own digging and found that what I was given was true. He's never had cancer. He's never been a vet. He's never lived in a big house. He does not have a private helicopter. He doesn't have a private jet like Rose likes to run around saying he does. You know how rich you have to be to have a private jet, and he's also said he had a yacht. Incredibly, incredibly wealthy, especially you, in this economy. You, you got to be like a billionaire. But it's, yeah, but it's all lies. What I see is a very, very desperate man who really didn't want this podcast to get out, and he was doing everything in his power, um, which wasn't really much, but a whole bunch of lies. Uh, and I just... I just can't believe anything he's saying anymore. You know, I never could. Um, I'll never trust uh, any sort of kindness he shows, any sort of manipulative words he sends my way. And that's really the reason why I'm just blocking all these fools that waste my time. You can leak uh, all the texts you want and stuff, but, uh, you know, the show must go on. And uh, he's he's quite literally ruined uh, a couple of lives. And uh, if you if you see uh, the panel that's in front of us tonight, I mean, these people are not happy with what happened. And, uh, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, down, you know, thinking about um, everything that happened and reflecting on the past. And um, it's really it really is a shame um, that it had to get to this point that we have to uh, sit here and discuss these matters and uh, catch um, essentially what is probably the biggest poser in Red Dead red handed, you know. So uh, we, we hope that you can, you know, use this information as you will. You can think it's hearsay. Um, you, can, you can discredit it. You can not, not believe it. But go ask him. Go ask all these uh, leaders. What are you doing? What, what is the truth? And we already see the whole picture. You know what I mean? Go to the problem. And the problem is these leaders. Talk to them and, uh, and really make up your own mind. Be, be critical about... Um, the things that you uh, interpret and uh, question everything. I hope that the DAF members that do want to get out should get out and uh, we will offer you support. Uh, you just have to reach out and, uh, you know, assuming that you're serious, I mean, there's always hope. Don't stay anywhere uh, that, you, that you aren't comfortable with and this is recreational gaming. Um, but pursue happiness, guys. You know, not and, and it's not a Will Smith movie either. It's like, it's like really... Try to find joy in your lives again and, and, and really understand why you bought this game and started uh, playing in the first place. Because you can't tell me it's for cheating. It's not. This game offers so much more than that. You know, even if I do cover, um, you know, things that are often negative uh, these days and stuff like that. I mean, these problems are um, prevalent and significant. And uh, if, if they do uh, get erased from the community, um, people will be able to breathe again. People will be able to play again. So I really hope people can be uh, progressive about this because these are the leaders that you follow. These are the people that you look up to. People who create fake personas to appear powerful in some ways. They obsess over control and, and have God complexes when they're mere peasants. Okay, you look at, you look at photos of him. You look at, you look at what he's done. You look at uh, what he's accomplished and he's nowhere near what he portrays to be. I just think that uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel and uh, people need to put their egos aside and that's all I have to say.
don't be afraid of uh, anyone on a game. Yeah, feel free to come talk to Nix or I about joining the Discord if you're looking for a more relaxed group of people to play Red Dead with, a crew. Me and uh, another Axe staff member, Feta, run Puka, which is our current crew. We're, we're not toxic. We try to keep a smaller environment with more uh, wholesome people. It's it's quality over quantity for us. Mm -hmm. So you guys could always come talk to either of us about getting into a gaming community and playing other games other than just Red Dead. Um, I would definitely say don't stick yourself in those situations and feel like you're stuck because there are ways out. Even if you don't want to join something like that, you could still come talk to me and I'll gladly help get you out of a situation whether you're with staff or not a different crew whatever i can i can help you out do what makes you happy don't let anyone try and stop you from being happy and mm -hmm. if that's leaving a toxic crew to go to a healthy place do that do what you need to do at the end of the day you know you gotta realize it's uh it's a game and unfortunately you can't always trust what you're told even if it's by supposed friends on here um people ain't always as they seem and you know and there are good people out here still regardless of how old grim it might look there are still good people out here who want to play fair who you know are looking for other good people to be around don't just, you know, follow up with what everyone else is saying. We all got this game to enjoy it. The beauty of it. Goofing off with friends. Having some fun PvP. Actually having people that have each other's backs. Don't, you know, forget why you got this game. Don't let the toxicity... The BS, the crew beefs, don't let all that get in the way of it. Find a group of people that you can trust, that you vibe well with, and have fun with them. And if something happens and you're not happy about it, don't be scared to leave. Because what's the worst thing really that can happen in game besides a egotistic dumbass booting you off you get shot you die what you respawn whoop d parlay chain servers whatever there's no reason to be scared of anybody on this platform but don't ever let anybody make you feel like you have to do something you don't want to do be your own voice be your own person and if you can't find your voice all of us here today, we can help you find that voice. Whether it's with Maddie's crew, whether you want more PvP and you want to come to AOC, or any other crew, or just freelance, or a friend group, do what makes you happy. And don't let nobody stand in the way of that. Mm -hmm. Wise words. Wise words. All right, guys, this was uh, a very informative podcast. Um, it's never pretty to do these things, but uh, it has to be done. So that's going to be pretty much it. Um, just stay tuned for the next one, I guess. So this is uh, Hell Risen in the panel signing off, guys. No randos for life. Peace. Peace. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>